Welcome to the next episode of the Microbiology Tube. So today we'll be talking about the Candida albicans. So Candida albicans is the normal flora of the human body. Candida albicans is the yeast which is responsible for causing the opportunistic fungal infection. Actually the Candida albicans is the normal flora but what actually happens is that whenever a person is immunocompromised at that time the person can be infected with the Candida albicans. So whenever the person is immunocompromised, the number of the candida in any specific organs increases. So if the number of the organisms of the candida increases, then it is said to be the disease called the candidiasis. So the candidiasis ha have the gram-positive boarding yeast. So whenever we culture the uh, and we culture the candida albicans it will produce the white pastry like colonies in the sobro districts agar so the colonies can be seen within two to three days when it is incubated at 37 degrees centigrade so after you after you found the white pastry like colonies in the sobro districts agar you can do the gram staining so in the gram staining you will obtain the gram positive boarding yeast so then after what is confirmed is that the candida is confirmed so one of the distinguishing features of the candida albicans is that it produces the germ tube test positive. The next organisms yeast is also there, which gives the candida which gives the germ tube test positive. But what you can do is that you can separate the candida albicans from the candida doublenses by you know temperature tolerance test. So candida albicans ca is able to grow at 42 degrees centigrade whereas candida doublenses cannot grow at 42 degrees centigrade. So in this way you can differentiate the candida albicans from rest of the species of the candida. So this is the uh, figures of the yeast cells pseudo hyphae and the true hyphae. So there are virulence factors which makes the candida pathogenic one is the polymorphism sep the polymorphism seps of the yeast pseudo hyphae and the hyphae makes the makes the candida albicans more pathogenic so whenever there is the infections the researcher have noted the rise of rise in the hyphae of the hyphae of the candida albicans so the, according to the researcher they suggest that hyphae is responsible for causing the pathogenicity the next form is is responsible for transferring the yeast or the candida from one place to the another place in the or uh, from one organ to the another organ in the human body next is the adhesions so there is the there is the special sets of the glycosyl phosphata phosphatidyl inositol which are linked to the surface glycoproteins which will allow it to add with the other microorganisms so whenever it is added to the surface of the other microorganisms then it it becomes more pathogenic and it is it cannot be killed by the normal medicines or the normal antifungals next is the invasions so there is the protein called ALSL3 proteins. So ALS3 proteins is responsible for the additions as well as it is responsible for the invasion of the host epithelial cells and the endothelial cells. So the invasions is also the one of the factors for causing the infections. So next is the biofilm formations. So candida has the ability to form the biofilms in the living as well as the non-living surfaces. So what actually is the biofilm? So what happens is that the biofilms uh, is that they, the yeast cells adhere itself by the surfaces and after they become the after they be after they form the biofilm so they becomes you know they becomes more virulent and uh, the other antifungals cannot work on them. So next is the secreted hydrolysis. So candida can secrete the three main hydrolysis that are the protease, phospholipases and the lipases. So it is proposed that hydrolysis helps to facilitate the pathogen's active penetrations into the host cells and the uptake of the extracellular nutrients from the, from the environment. So it will help to penetrate as well as up to uptake the nutrients from the environment. Next is the metabolic adaptations. So candida albicans has one of the good metabolic adaptations. It means it can adapt in any situations. So it can adapt whenever there is the there is the low nutrition. It can adapt whenever there is the high nutrition. For example, candida albicans can grow at in the blood 
because and we know that the there is the high amount of the sugar in the or the glucose in the blood but what happens is that whenever the candida albicans are engulfed by the macrophages or the neutrophils so in the neutrophils and the macrophages there will be the less amount of the glucose and at that time the, at that time the candida albicans will switch off the glycolysis and it will adapt in such situations too so what is the pathogenesis then so under the certain conditions what happens is that candida gains access to the systemic circulations from oropharynx to the gastrointestinal tract so from any of the means from the oropharynx to the gastrointestinal tract from any of the means it will it will have access to the systematic circulation so from the oropharynx or from the gastrointestinal tract or from the genito urinary tract from any of this method uh, or any of this way the candida albicans will enter inside the blood vessels so whenever it enter enter inside the blood vessels then then after it will cause the disease so you can see colonizations is the of the muco colonizations you can see the colonizations of the muco cutaneous surface is the first stage in the pathogenesis of candida infections the fungus the fungus causes invasions in the human tissue through the different roads so what happens is that first of all the candida albicans will colonize and then after it will invade the human tissue then after it will cause the disruption of the cells uh, and after the disruptions of the cell so what will happen it will go to the blood stream so another reason another thing is that whenever there is the massive colonization from that massive colonization there will be the last number of the candida albicans so from that the yeast can be transferred into the human blood clinical features so candida albicans has the three clinical features one is the oropharyngeal candidiasis next is the bulbo vaginal candidiasis and next is the invasive candidiasis so i will talk about the oral candidiasis so oral candidiasis is the infections in the mouth and the throat area it is usually characterized by the formations of white patches on the top of the tongue and throughout the mouth which also known as the thrush which is also called as the oral thrush so this infected area will cause the soreness and difficulty in eating so you can see this is one of the examples of the candida albicans infections so this is called the oropharyngeal candidiasis or oral thrush so you can see there is the white patches over here so these white patches are due to the colonizations of the colonizations of the candida albicans so what will it do it it will have the it will cause the soreness and difficulties in eating in the humans so actually the persons who are old they they may be infected by this kinds of the diseases or the persons who are infected with the infected with the diseases like the hiv can also have the oral thrush so next is the vulvo vaginal candidiasis so vulvo vaginal candidiasis is the infections of the genital regions actually that is the that is the regions called the vaginal walls in the omen so the vaginal is infections causes the itchiness and the burning sensations in the vagina and the surrounding tissue so what will happen is that at whenever the whenever the omen is suffering for, from the genital candidiasis or the vulvo vaginal candidiasis at that time there will be the white discharge so why there will be the white discharge so if there is the white discharge then there, that may that omen may be suffer from the candidiasis genital candidiasis and this vulvo vaginal candidiasis or the genital candidiasis can be transferred from omen to the man during the sexual intercourse so next is the invasion candidiasis so invasion candidiasis is the infections of candida albicans into the blood stream so whenever whenever there is the colonizations of the yeast in, in a certain organ then what happens is that the yeast will transfer into the blood stream after the yeast is transferred into the blood stream then then through the blood it will transfer to the various organs of the body like kidney liver brain and many more so it will cause the disease in the humans so next is the laboratory diagnosis of the candida albicans so the specimens are the exudates or tissues from the for microscopy obtained from the skin or the nails and that is examined by the 
microscope for the demonstrations of the pseudo IV and boarding and boarding is cells of the candidiasis then after what we do the next is the microscopy so what can we do in the microscopy we can do the we can culture the bacteria we can culture the bacteria uh, bacteria and we can we can perform the gram stain so actually in only in the microscopy so what we'll do we will take the specimen and we will we will do the gram stain and if there back if there is any gram positive oval boarding yeast and the pseudo hyphae then there may be the then there may be the candida albicans so we can what we can do we can directly follow the microscopy or after the culture we can do the microscopy but many of the hospitals perform the direct microscopy because it is uh, because it is it, it doesn't take much time for the microscopy or for the detections of the disease so you can see this is the figure of the candida albicans or the candida species which is the gram positive boarding yeast so you can see this is the albicans so all these are the candida so you can see there is the boarding yeast so this type of this structure is of the candida albicans so this is the germ tube test you can see here this is the cell and this has produced this germ tube so if, if it has produced the germ tube then that is the candida albicans so next is the culture method so what you can do as already i have discussed in the earlier earlier lecture so so what is the how can we do the culture we can do the cultures in the sobro testo agar and white pastry like colonies is often in often uh, for often in the candida then after there is after the observations of the white candida white pastry like colonies then what we do is that we do the gram stain after the gram staining there will be the white uh, there will be the gram positive boarding yeast and if there is the gram positive boarding yeast then we have to do the germ tube test and after doing the germ tube test we can do the we can do the uh, we can do the temperature tolerance test which is the 42 degree centigrade candida albicans is able to grow at 42 degree centigrade whereas the candida albicans cannot grow at 42 degree centigrade so this is the figure of the uh, candida so it is it you can see this is the white pastry like colonies so actually the candida albicans will produce the white pastry like colonies in the in the in the sovereign testo saga whereas the cryptococcus will produce the mucoid colonies in the in the uh, sovereign testo saga you can see this figure this is the white pastry like colonies it is not the mucoid colony so you can easily differentiate the candida from the cryptococcus so other non-culture detections includes includes the candida manon assay candida heat label antigen assay d arvinital assay d inocytal assay and 13 beta d glucon assay so next there is also the immunological test which is the skin test and uh, it is it is done by it is it is a type of the hypersensitivity reaction so thank you for watching my video if you really like the video please don't forget to subscribe my channel and share the video thank you